upstairs as well. We held a dormitory for some of the Panther children. We had about how many dormitories? Uh, five or six uh, dormitories for the Panther children. Um, now, Melvin, you want to ask me? Okay. Um, one thing that uh, people ask how the Trinity got started. It was a really interesting story. One of the uh, doctors, Dr. Burke uh, Small, who's still active, he's at the clinic out in East Oakland. When we came into the clinic, we didn't know exactly what we were doing. But people said, well, how did you staff the clinic? How did you learn what you learned to do? Actually, we learned from a lot of the Vietnam vets who came back and were medics. They taught us about blood testing, they taught us how to take blood, they taught people that how to do the sickle cell testing, and also started showing people how to actually do physical. So, how did we get our supplies? Well, actually, we talked to pharmaceutical representatives, and they were actually the leads for uh, actual samples, and we ended up having a full pharmacy. With Dr. Bert Small coming on and getting other people, we started having a lot of nurses and doctors who would come in and volunteer their time. And so it became a model. And so you know that the Black Panther Party also started the Sickle Cell Anemia Foundation, which of course a lot of people claim it, but we did the testing, uh, we informed the community, and now there, there's a resurgence uh, in the information concerning sickle cell anemia because if two people have a trait, their child could be born with a full-blown sickle cell and affects mostly young people. So I just want to add that fact on how we learned a lot of what we did, and then how many clinics did we end up having? Well, we had the first clinic open in the Chicago, the first chapter, three clinics in the Chicago chapter. The first free clinic of the Black Panther Party was Chicago, Illinois, uh, under the leadership of Fred Hampton. Some of you probably heard of him, who was the late Fred Hampton, but uh, they were. Uh, uh, leading in uh, clinics, uh, organizing clinics, and the sickle cell anemia campaign. They also tested, and they was they had also breakfast programs, etc. As we had them here, but it was Chicago and Seattle, Washington, where I served there about three years. Three years, we started up the campaign early on too, uh, through the prison, Walla Walla State Prison in Washington, State Washington. We would recruit doctors and medical people, as James was pointing out, often from the campuses. And uh, we would go through our busing, free busing program, and would lead us into the prisons. And in the prison, we tested the doctors, led the tests, and trained the volunteers how to do the test. Because test is quite simple. You pick the finger, you sample your blood, and you need what they call a electrophoresis machine. So that they test the blood and they test the red blood. I mean, it tests to, to, to see if your blood is is proper because the red blood compounds will sickle up and loses oxygen and that sort of thing. It can cause your death. But anyway, we moved forward with that campaign, as Jamie pointed out from this facility here, Initially called the uh, the Free Bobby uh, Bobby Hill Bobby Seal Free Clinic, and as George was murdered and assassinated in 1971, we changed the name to Free George Jackson Free Clinic. Okay. And it's really significant to know that the the spirit and the the, the vision and the mission for for the community is still existing today. This is a, this house is the Berkeley Drop-In Center. The Berkeley Drop-In Center serves as an advocate for mental health, people with mental health issues. And I happen to serve on the board. I'm the vice chairman of the Alameda County Network for Mental Health Clients. So the spirit goes on and the work continues.